I don't think most people realize how much goes into basketball strength. We got players who are skinny as hell and despite being told they need to add weight or they need to gain some muscle mass, can move around players like it's nothing. Then you got the yoked LA fitness hooper who looks huge but they just can't seem to move anyone on the court. And don't get me wrong, what we typically consider as strength, so like raw strength, weight room numbers even, this is a part of basketball strength like we'll talk about, but it's nowhere near everything. So here's how you can become an unbelievably strong hooper even if you never end up looking like it. I'll give you all the different pieces that make up basketball strength, find which ones you lack in, and work on building that. Or to make it easier, just check out the ultimate athleticism program in my virtual academy. And this covers all of these. Sorry, shameless plug, had to do it, but let's get to it. Let's go! So first is human strength, which comes down to this. Can you perform these basic human athletic movements very well? So maybe different crawling variations. This is sprinting, galloping, skipping, maybe some gymnastics types variations, things where you're holding up your own weight. These are things that aren't really inherent to a sport. They're just different athletic movements we do as humans. And if you can't do these, you're leaving basketball strength on the table. These are the foundations of movement and it's low hanging fruit too. Plus life is more than basketball. So as you age, if you're really strong, and really good at these movements, you're gonna age better, which I know you don't care about now as a hooper trying to get stronger, but it is valuable. And you even see guys like Victor Wimbanyama training this way. I'd assume because he and his camp understand that he's still young and has this crazy uncanny frame, which means that developing these foundations of movement should be a huge emphasis. And lastly, this also ensures that you're a more balanced, well-rounded athlete, which is huge for injury prevention. In my experience, the players who get injured less are the ones who can move in a ton of different ways. They move well as a human before they move well as a hooper. And a lot of the time this can be attributed to or built by other sports too. When you play a bunch of sports, especially as a kid, you're exposed to a really wide range of movements, which makes you a more all around athlete and balances out the movements you're competent at and the structures that you use. And same thing here, some of the strongest players and best movers that I've worked with played a ton of different sports growing up. Second is general strength, which just means building the overall structure that is our body. This doesn't have to be super specific, but it's just building up the tissue, so the muscle, the connective tissue that we use for every movement when we're on the basketball court. And contrary to popular belief, number one, we don't have to lift crazy heavy for this, and two, it doesn't have to be perfect or very specific thing. Don't get me wrong, it should challenge you, and there's absolutely room for lifting heavy or close to max as I'll speak about, but a lot of this is a matter of just finding ways to strengthen the structures that we use on the basketball court, but more importantly, leave energy to actually train on the basketball court, which is where we make our real money. So I like single leg exercises a lot here because it allows us to reduce asymmetries and imbalances. We can't favor one leg or the other when we're only on one leg, and it's way less demanding on the nervous system, which again means that we can be pressure on the court. And in terms of keeping it simple, yes, of course, there's a science and an art to exercise selection, but it comes down to this. Strengthen all the muscles that you use on the court. The exercises that you do to get there matter, but not a crazy amount. And I know way more players who get paralysis by analysis. They start thinking about what's the perfect exercise for this. And as a result, they don't end up doing anything. And I'd rather you just choose exercises that you can do, that you can stick to, rather than overthinking which one's perfect. So definitely make sure you're building general strength throughout your entire body. Third is human to human strength, which is where we get really interesting. And this is something that can be considered a skill just as much as strength. So when you look at how we actually use our strength in basketball, it can be in three different ways. Number one, we can put force in the ground to move ourselves. So a jump, a sprint, whatever. Number two, we can move the ball. So maybe manipulating it in midair, making a pass, shooting it. Or three, we can use it against other humans. So this is working through contact, playing against physical defense, taking a bump. And this third one involves a lot of skill. Yes, to get good at this, we need all the other qualities that we're talking about, but the timing, the angles, and the feel for this human to human strength is something we actually have to work on too. So I like to train this in strength workouts by warming up with manual resistance exercises. Things like these where we're working against other humans, getting used to creating leverage, resisting contact, and adjusting to all the moving pieces. There are so many things you can do here, but the idea is getting used to rather than moving a weight, moving or resisting an actual human. And this should also be covered in skill workouts too, since many skills involve this type of human to human strength. For example, contact finishing. Yes, we can build all the qualities that go into it, but if we don't actually train with contact in our workouts sometimes, it's hard for us to really develop this human to human strength. Same thing with driving through contact, same thing with defense. This should be a focus in our workouts, and this is a huge gap that we have to bridge from the weight room onto the court. Fourth is big power, which I think of as being able to produce a single bout of high force and to do it quickly. This is a max intensity jump for a dunk. 
a 100% sprint to a chase down block. A big bump in the post that sends a defender backwards. Of course, a lot of that human to human strength and other things come into play here. But we can also help build this in the weight room through power work and just moving fat. Now, this is a really deep topic, but here are the basics. So number one, when we lift heavy, this is just improving the potential that we have to create force on the court. It's raising the ceiling of the force that we can create. Because when you look at this graph, we call the force time curve, where here is the amount of force that you're creating, and here is the amount of time that it takes. You may be able to produce all this force over the course of a second or two, but this line right here is the cutoff for how long basketball movements take. A cut, a ground contact on a jump, etc. So many times our weight room strength right here is actually too slow to be useful. You can be the strongest hooper in the weight room, but if it takes you five Five seconds to lift a weight, this will never really matter on the court. And when you scoot down this graph in terms of the amount of time that's used to create this force, you get closer to your standard power work. Loaded jumps, basic Olympic lifts, and a lot more are all included here. It can be pretty good tools to build that fat strength. But more important than any of this though is becoming springy and elastic. This super fast strength. Strength isn't just muscular or slow. To me, players who aren't crazy, traditionally strong, but are very elastic and pop off the ground with power are also unbelievably strong. So we need to build this with intense plyos and learning how to hit the ground fast with force. So sprinting is a strength exercise. Jumping is a strength exercise. It's just a different type of strength, but we're producing a lot of force, learning how to stiffen up our Achilles and all these structures. And in fact, these are probably the most important strength exercises. So my suggestion is this, find which one is your weakness. Is it the big strength where it's taking a long time to produce force? Is it the more traditional power exercises? Or is it that quick springy elastic pop off the ground? And then try to get that part up to speed a bit. So if you're super strong in the weight room, you can lift a lot of weight, but it takes you time to do that. Well, the main goal should probably be getting springy. If you're super elastic and get off the ground quickly, but maybe you don't get as high, maybe you get bumped around a lot on the court, well then some of this slower weight room work can probably help. But regardless, always have a focus on being springy. Basketball is a very plyometric based sport, so this one should never leave the program. Number five is positional strength. This is a bit more basketball specific and revolves around being strong in positions that are vulnerable or that we see a lot on the court. So really low positions, maybe positions where our arms are overhead or outside our frame, or even crazy angles that we expose our joints to, like these of the ankles as you're driving to the hoop. Developing these will definitely help you move more fluidly, but it'll also help you resist injury because you're strong once you get to these positions. So I like to think of building this in three different stages. Number one, you're just exposing yourself to these positions. So you're doing this in kind of an isometric way. You get there, you hold it, and you build comfort in that position first. You say to your body, hey, this is what this feels like in this weird position, let's start to get comfortable here. Then you're gonna add force to it, okay? Maybe you hold a weight, maybe you push against something so you're going with an overcoming isometric. So you're getting strong in these positions now. And this is gonna help you become a lot more mobile too, more flexible, because more traditional stretching exercises, the problem with that is that once you get there, you're not actually strengthening the structure. So your body won't let you get there when you play. But here, we're starting to add some force in it, we're starting to build strength in these vulnerable positions, which is a really good second step. The third step though, is adding speed and power into these positions. So not only have we gotten there, not only have we added some strength there, but now we're adding high speed strength, which is probably what's gonna happen in a game. So for example, if you wanna get more mobile or more positional strength at your ankle, probably good to just move your ankle in ways that gets you to these positions, then add in some strength, so do some strength exercises in the ankle, and then lastly, maybe doing some extreme plyos, where you're working fast, getting in and out of these positions with force. And this, again, is a big part of basketball strength because it allows you to get to these positions that we need to hit on the court and do it assertively without getting injured and being able to put force into the ground. And then lastly is adaptable strength or in other words can you suddenly hit a new weird position and still control it comfortably can you unexpectedly fall down and smoothly catch yourself even in a position you may not train in this is huge for injury prevention and again another reason why you should be training a bit outside of the box to prepare for these weirder situations because trust me it does happen and by the time you get there if you haven't worked on this you're already injured you're missing time and I don't want that to happen to you guys. And lastly, before we get out of here, I wanna cover the topic of adding weight. At the end of the day, adding weight can be a good thing. Momentum equals mass times velocity. So if you're able to move faster and you have more mass, you can create more momentum against defenders or whatever you're doing on the court. But at the same time, the more mass you have, the stronger you have to be to make every cut every jump, every step, and do so fluidly. And the more vulnerable you are to injury if you're not building the strength. And I know a lot of the time you just have to look the part. Like for me, I was super scrawny when I was younger, so I had to gain weight. 
even if I didn't really need it, just because I wanted to look the part for coaches, which sucks, but it's part of the game. But I would say, if you are going to add weight, make sure you do it slowly. Don't try to take it too fast, because if you do add, say, 15 pounds in two months, whatever it may be, it's literally like putting on a 15 pound weighted vest because your body's not adapted to that weight yet and then doing everything on the court with that weighted vest on. Probably get injured if you did that with a weighted vest. So think of it the same way in terms of gaining weight. Don't go too fast, take it slow, trust the process, and don't think this is the only key to getting strong because as you can see, with all of these, there are so many different pieces that go into basketball strength. And I want you guys to find which ones you lack at, train those, bring them up to speed, and I promise you guys, you're gonna see how much better you move and resist contact on the court. So, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. If you wanna check out the Ultimate Athleticism Program, it's down in the description. If not, I'll see you on the next video.